what this video is going to be about it's going to be all about my heating costs throughout the winter period what it's cost me to heat my pond via the air source heat pump you might find this video interesting if you're thinking about buying an air source heat pump or if you've always wondered what it costs to heat a pond through the winter time I've got a lot to go into a lot of numbers and figures so if you're interested in what the cost in is of an air source heat pump through the winter period then stick around right welcome back guys so like i said in the intro this video is going to be all about my costings of running the air source heat pump through the winter time uh, to heat my pond now what i've taken for the winter period is the months of january february and march the reason i've done that is because typically more in my location anyway those three months tend to be the coldest three months of the year all three months there's always a possibility of snow you know there's going to be a cold frosty spell in there somewhere it's not uncommon to have snow in march so i figured if i did the winter period as January, February, March, that pretty much gave a good representation of probably the most extreme um, weather that we might face in those three months. December, I didn't really take that into account because typically over the last few years, December has been quite a mild wet month, to, to be honest with you. It's not really been particularly cold in December. Um, and like I say, as, as cold as months have been, January, February and March. So that's what my data has been collected on. So I'm going to get into it now guys um, and I'll explain everything as we go along. Right then guys, so I have got my data in front of me. There's no way I could make this video without having my data in front of me. Um, there's a lot, a lot of information that I've had to collect to be able to do this video. And remembering all this is nigh on impossible, as you can probably quite appreciate. Right, so obviously we're starting in January. Now, what you're going to have to bear in mind during this period, um, or during these costings, is not one pond is the same. So what my costings are is going to be totally different to someone else's costings. Now, this is all based on my pond, which is 10,000 litres. Um, it's relatively sheltered, the walls of the pond are insulated, um, it's fiberglass, it's made out of 140 mil blocks laid on the sides so that makes the walls even thicker which adds to thermal insulation and also geographical location and things like that is also going to play a massive part so someone that's down in south you typically, you typically get warmer weather so it's going to be quite a bit different for someone like me that's in Midlands area where we get quite quite harsh weather um, or if you're even further up north you're going to get even even more harsh weather um, as you start moving up Yorkshire way or even further up into into the northern parts of England so just bear in mind that <clears throat> you know there is going to be variables um, different parts of the country has, has different um, has different frost levels and things like that so you, you've got to give a bit of leeway to to these kind of costings so don't just take them as a as a as an exact figure of what you're going to be looking at they're not going to be too far off but you do have to bear these kind of variables in mind so in fact i should just point this out for a start okay so obviously you've got to bear in mind your electricity prices now my electricity price um for the whole of this testing period for January through um, to the end of March my unit price um, per kilowatt hour of electricity was 27.57 pence now in this figure I have not taken into consideration a standing charge and the reason I haven't taken that into consideration is because I'd have been paying a standing charge no matter what if I didn't have the pond, I'd have still been paying a standing charge. So I'm not taking that into account. So this is purely based on as unit price um, per kilowatt hour, hour of electricity. Okay, so we're starting in January. Now, January for me was a weird month. And the reason for that was, if you remember back, 
at the beginning of January, um, my pond was sat at 10 degrees. The, the ASO seat pump was holding it at 10 degrees. Now, the first week, I had an issue where I had to raise my temperature up. And that was due to the fact that my Chagoy developed a raised scale. Now, due to the shen shenanigans that I had last season, I was taking no chances with it. So, I made the decision to raise the temperature of the pond up to kick in the fish's immune system to, to try and help it healing on its way or, or to try and find out if we was dealing with something bigger. Anyway, in the end, the fish was absolutely fine. It healed, no problem. But the fact is, um, from the second week of January, my pond was taken up to 21 degrees right through till the end of January. So from the first week of January, my pond was uncovered at 10 degrees. From the second week of January through to the end of January, it was at 21 degrees, okay? I'm just gonna give you some, a few, a few facts about January, a bit of data what I collected to, to, um, to help us along with these figures that, that's been collected so we can see so we can see um, how much has been used why why that much has been used etc so in January 11 days during January was under 5 degrees Celsius in the daytime 23 days in January was under 10 degrees Celsius in the daytime the maximum daytime temperature in January that we encountered here in Derbyshire or Chesterfield was 14 degrees Celsius. The minimum daytime temperature was minus one. Okay, now the third week of January was the coldest with sub zero nighttime temperatures reaching as low as minus five degrees Celsius, right? and the average temperature throughout the whole of January was worked out at 4.5 degrees Celsius okay now bearing those numbers in mind throughout the whole of January my air source heat pump used a total of 254.5 kilowatt hours now that works out when you when you um, work that out with the cost of my electricity price per per unit, that works out for the whole of January. It cost me seventy pounds and sixteen pence to heat my pond throughout the whole of January. Now, also what I'm going to do at the end of this, um, for those that um, that might be interested, I'm also going to give a breakdown of what my solar generated and also for my for my own um, data collecting purposes and for my own peace of mind I want to know how much the solar has saved me from running this pond heater throughout the winter time so I'm, I'm going to chuck that in there as well at the end of the video um, just just so we know how much has been saved or whatever um, if you're not bothered about that bit it don't matter but I want to know for myself just how much I've saved if anything so that's going to be put in um, at the end of the video. So bearing that in mind for January, um, those those figures for the amount of electricity that was used on the heat pump in January, we'll move on to February. Right, so February. February again, the pond was still sat at 21 degrees Celsius. And it was sat at 21 degrees until the 17th of February when... I started dropping my temperature back down again. Obviously, the fish was healed now, so there was not there was not really any point in keeping my temperature up so high. So from the 17th of February onwards, I started dropping my temperature. So on the 17th, the air source heat pump was dropped down to 20 degrees. On the 18th of February, it was then dropped down to 19 degrees, and then on the 19th of February it was dropped down to 18 degrees and then from then onwards it stayed at 18 degrees all the way through okay 
So, I'll give you a few facts about February again. 16 days in February was um, under 10 degrees Celsius in the daytime. The maximum daytime temperature in February was 17 degrees Celsius. The minimum daytime temperature was 4 degrees Celsius. And the fourth week in February was the coldest with sub-zero nighttime temperatures as low as minus one degrees. And the average temperature throughout the whole of February was 7.5 degrees. Now, as I said, from the 19th of February onwards, my pond was sat at 18 degrees, which is where it stayed. So now, the whole of February in total, bearing all that in mind, a, a total of 187.8 kilowatt hours was used on the air source heat pump. That works out at a total for February of 51 pounds and 77 pence. So now we shall move on to March. Right then, so March, again, the pond is still at 18 degrees, okay? It's been sat at 18 degrees since 19th of February, stayed there all the way through March to the end of March, 18 degrees so we're still at 18 degrees nothing's changed a few things about March then 12 days in March was on um, was under 10, 10 degrees Celsius in the daytime the maximum daytime temperature in March reached 16 degrees Celsius and the minimum daytime temperature in March reached 7 degrees Celsius so it, it was it wasn't too bad um, the first week in March was the coldest with sub-zero nighttime temperatures as low as minus two all right we didn't have many of those maybe one or two but it still got there all right which has a big impact on your heat pump the average temp throughout the whole of march was worked out at 7.7 .7 degrees celsius and the air source heat pump in total used 189 kilowatt hours and that works out at a cost for march of 52 pounds and 10 pence okay so let's calculate all of those from january february and march calculate the total cost for those three months so the total for january february and march bearing in mind from the second week in january till mid february i was sat at 21 degrees celsius and then i slowly came down to 18 degrees where it's been sat since the end of march okay so the total for january february and march the air source heat pump used 631.3 kilowatt hours of electricity now again with my unit price of electricity which is twi which was 27.57 pence per unit that meant it cost a total of 174 pounds and three pence to heat my pond which is 10,000 litres through for three months January February and March which what I consider the coldest three months of the year so for those three months to keep it heated from 21 degrees to 18 degrees cost me 174 pounds and three pence okay now some might think that sounds quite expensive which that's fine um, everyone's got got their own view of what expensive is um, but one thing you do have to bear in mind is obviously it doesn't have to be that expensive because I could have let it drop all the way back down to 10 degrees again or ambient or whatever the reason why I didn't do that was because come April time which is what we're in now the pond is going to go back up to 24 degrees celsius because i'm going to get on feed so i didn't feel there was any point during that time period of letting it drop all the way back down to ambient trying to heat it all the way back up again because that would have used even more energy to do that so that's why i kept it at 18 degrees okay but you, you don't you don't have to you know you can let it drop back down it's not a problem so i could have i, I could have made it even cheaper i just chose not to so i personally don't think the 174 pounds for three months of the coldest three months of the year is that bad to keep it heated to to that temperature now one thing 
um, that I want to throw into spanner here. I want to throw spanner in works. Just give me a minute. I hope you're ready for this because I, I, I found this quite amusing. <laughs> right, so for the coldest three months of the year, it cost me £174 to heat 10,000 litres of water. All right. Now, if we do the maths on that, if we divide that costing of £174 um, by 10,000 litres to break it down to cost per litre over three months, that works out that over three months the cost per litre to heat was 0 0.017 pence per litre. All right, so basically not even 2p. All right, now this is where the spanner gets thrown in. <laughs> The average kettle to boil, now the average kettle is 1.7 litres, alright? To boil a full 1.7 litre kettle on average costs 5 pence per boil, <laughs> right? So when you break that down, for me to heat 1 litre of water has not even cost me 2 pence over 3 months, alright? It works out that it's 1.7 times cheaper for me to heat my pond through the winter time over three months than it would be to boil a kettle. <laughs> I'll just leave you with that one for a minute. I'll just let that one sink in. So the moral of that story is don't boil a kettle, don't have a cup of tea, don't have a coffee, buy an ASOC pump and eat your ponds. <laughs> it's much cheaper. <laughs> Well, yeah, I did find that very amusing. I, th I thought that was quite funny, actually. <laughs> so what I want to do is see if the solar has offset the cost of running the air source heat pump through the winter time, um, to see whether it's been worth it, um, and to see whether it saved me any money. Um, some people might find this part interesting. Um, some people might not. Again, some people might be thinking about solar. Um, so I'll break this part down too. Um, why not? So January. I generated 187.9 kilowatt hours of electricity now again with my unit price of electricity of uh, 27.57 pence that works out at 51 pounds and 80 pence worth of electricity that was generated in January not only that but I also sent back to the grid which I get paid for 2.8 kilowatt hours of electricity now for every one kilowatt hour of electricity I send back to the grid I get paid 15 pence per kilowatt hour so that means for sending those 2.8 kilowatt hours of electricity back to the grid they paid me 42p better than a kick in teeth <laughs> so yeah for January, 187.9 were generated, 2.8 were sent back to the grid. Um, so that's that. February solar generation. So the amount of solar generated in February was 190.3 kilowatt hours and 13.5 kilowatt hours sent back to grid. So from the amount generated, it works out at 52 pounds and 46 pence worth of electricity um, that was generated in February. For the amount of electricity that I sent back to the grid, I was paid two pounds, better than 42 pence. For March, now this is where um, solar starts to get interesting. As you start going through March, April, May, that's when you start seeing you know your savings as you start getting past March so for March the total amount of solar generated was huge compared to the last pre couple of months so I generated 303.1 kilowatt hours worth of electricity which works out at 83 pounds and 56 pence worth of, of electric the amount I sent back to grid again massive difference I sent back to the grid 48 kilowatt hours and I got paid for that seven pounds 20 all right so if we move on further if we if we move on further from that 
when we think of those three months, January, February, and March, now for solar generation, those are your worst, probably your worst three months of the year. Well, probably aside from you know November, December, and things like that. But yeah, those three months are terrible. March not so bad, but certainly January and February. So for those three months, I generated a total of 681.3 kilowatt hours of electricity. Um, money wise that works out that I generated 187 pounds and 83 pence worth of electricity alright over those three months I sent back to the grid 64.3 kilowatt hours again money wise that means that the electricity company paid me nine pounds sixty four pence for the electricity that I sent back to them so that works out at a total um, when we add together the amount of electricity generated and the amount of electricity that I sent back money wise that works out at a hundred and ninety seven pounds and forty seven pence of electricity um, generated if we look back at how much it costs to run the air source heat pump through the winter time the air source heat pump cost me 174 pounds and three pence so that means we're 23 pounds and 44 pence up so the solar has fully covered me to heat my pond from 21 degrees to 18 degrees right through the winter time um, what I consider well, the coldest three months the solar has fully covered me um, so that's good I've not had to pay a penny all winter for me to heat my pond I'm up 24 quid so that's going back into kitty <laughs> so yeah all's good um, look forward to seeing what I'm going to get through um, the rest of this year um, it's going to be my first full year with the solar so I'm interested in that but anyway I hope this video has given you guys some idea of the costing or what it, what it costs to run an air source heat pump like I say there's there's going to be variables in it um, but hopefully you can you can add some of those costings into your into your calculations um, and like I say really for three months it's cost me not even two pence um, to heat a liter of water so if you wanted to try and work it out you could base it on um, like I don't know if you base it on two pence per liter then it could give you an idea I suppose um, but yeah anyway that's that guys I just wanted to share my costumes with you I hope it's been of some use um, I hope it's been a little bit interesting um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time guys pissing it down outside so I'm not going to get no more than Uncle House. <laughs> See you in a bit.